Hello and welcome to our conversation. Um, the Family Voice have had the lovely opportunity to speak to Annie from Head to Head. Is that right, Annie? Yeah, Head to Head Sensory Theatre. Head to Head Sensory Theatre. I've heard loads of amazing things about your work from some of our families. And you recently sent me an email about some really exciting opportunities. Um, and my brain didn't process all of the, the writing. So I thought it would be really lovely to actually hear from you what you're doing and what is on offer for families like us. Right. Well, coming up this weekend, we have Steve Solz, a Who Done It adventure game for families. It's carried out via Zoom. So we have about six or seven families on each session. The sessions are held at 12 o'clock and two o'clock. And the full details, in case I miss anything out, is on our website, which is h2hsensorytheatre.com forward slash what's hyphen on. Lovely. What I'm going to do, Annie, is I have a, a lovely young man, um, my son, who, who's good with computers, and I'm going to try and get him to put Ooh. the address at the time at which you say it. Fingers crossed, it may not work. Otherwise, I'll make sure that it's in, in the comments of the video that we send out. Fine. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Stevie. Stevie was the brainchild of the daughter of our artistic director. Uh, Erica's just completed a degree in drama, multi-talented, dances, sings, performs, and plays uh, several musical instruments. But she has decided to help head to head and she's been a volunteer for years since she was a tiddler um, and now she's a, a paid actor and a paid director so she had this idea of Stevie that uses Toad on the Road our lovely show that went out a couple of years ago and Toad got up to all sorts of mischievous games um, stealing cars included and she's latched on to that so the detectives who help her on the Zoom session will be trying to track down Toad and the missing car. They'll go into a sales room to look at the cars that are on display. They'll do all sorts of things to track it down. There's a little advance pack that will help the families prepare for it. And there'll be a song to sing. There's Macaton signing as always. But they will be prepared with all their little props and that's but it's very very interactive and sensory and Sadiqi has a sidekick who is a young man with special needs who has performed with us live in the past and now is performing with us virtually and he is going down a storm he just loves telling everybody about his cat and everything in his life he's just amazing character because at the end of the session, which lasts about 35 minutes, there's what we call a snacks and chats. And you can open up your thermos, get out your sandwiches, but talk to the other families, network, socialize, find out what's going on. So for about 15 minutes or so, you're all chit-chatting quite normally, naturally, and, and feeling that you're not quite alone in the world. So we feel that's a really good aspect of that session. It sounds absolutely amazing, Annie. Can I ask what kind of age range is it aimed at for, for the, the children of the families? Right, it's aimed at seven plus. Um, and we've had young people in their 20s with PMLD. We've had young people aged seven with autism. So it, it's open gambit, really. It's five pound a session. So and that includes the advanced pack so if it didn't work for your child at the end of it it really hasn't been a very expensive waste of time and we yet have had no failures it's been a success all around because young amazing. people can dip in and out if they feel they want to switch off their camera they can do so if they want to switch off their audio they can do so they just it's their control to have fun, but they're in control. It sounds amazing. I just wanted to quickly, we, I know that in this world, a lot of us get really used to acronyms, don't we? And you mentioned PMLD, which I just, for everybody watching, stands for Profound Multiple Learning Disabilities, doesn't it? Yes. Um, but I think what you're, what you're 
explaining to us is actually you're able to reach an incredibly broad spectrum of ability in what you're doing, which is incredibly exciting because there's a level of inclusion there that makes my heart sing anyway. <laughs> Well, I think the carers and the family members get a bit of fun out of it, too. We've had reports that families say that almost the best part of it is the scavenger hunt and the making of things. And, you know, when when we weren't in lockdown on an earlier Zoom session, the daughter just enjoyed going out and shopping for the little cheap little bits and pieces that they could buy that would help really make the sense of the show when they took part in it. So you say it's happening this weekend, is that right? That's right. It's game one this weekend. We have other stories coming out later, but this is the case of the missing car. Great. That sounds absolutely fantastic. Um, I shall definitely go and have a look. And my, my children are old and above such things as games, but there's a part of me who goes, I might want to join in just for me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really good fun. Um, I know that there's you do so much and I'm, I'm really impressed by what you've been able to achieve through lockdown, because I imagine as a, as a theatre group, the notion of, of not interacting directly with audiences must have been a real challenge. It was we thought we'd have to close down for, a, for whatever period. And then we suddenly realised we had actors at home who were so talented. So we just said to them, entertain the troops so we came out with we were at that time we were doing come trot to camelot um we'd rehearsed it but hadn't put it in the can or taken it on tour but they all did something that was linked to their rehearsals of that so one gave medieval jokes another one showed you how to curtsy and uh, take an audience with a king during those times another one did a series of how to become a knight so taking the pages right the way through their their behaviour, the how they how they had to fight, how they stood, how they how they even held a, a goblet of wine for the king. It was all very intense. <laughs> yeah. That's what they did. And then suddenly the artistic director said, Well, I'm living at home with my daughter, who's a trained actor, my husband's a trained actor. I'm going to perform Come Trot to Camelot in my back garden. So she rewrote the script. She performed it in their back garden with her husband filming them and they, it ended up with 1,800 viewings on YouTube. Wow. Yeah. That is astonishing. I know you've got all sorts of other things and, and we're, we've talked about maybe having a few other chats about what, what you do. Um, but in terms of this little chat where we're promoting kind of what's coming up, was there anything else that you wanted to share with everybody? Yes, I would if you don't. Thank you for giving me a lovely lead in there, Benedict. <laughs> right. We are homeless. We're a volunteer led charity, but we've been based in my home for 15 years. Um, we have a storage unit in Fetcham in Surrey, but we are desperate to have a home. But we don't just want a home. We want a drop in centre for the special needs community where families who perhaps find it a little bit too much can pop in one day there's be a messy room a, a, a sensory room a soft play room there'll be a sensory garden with covered areas for picnics whatever the weather throws at us there'll be a a, a safe set, um, cafe uh, there'll be offices with people there to give them advice and help there'll be opportunities for work experience youngsters transitioning from school and special needs schools and colleges to come along and learn the theatre craft. Um, so that's what we're looking for. But we need people to like and to comment on your fund Surrey link. It's really important. We need a thousand, at least a thousand families. There's 23,000 of us here in Surrey. Asking a thousand of you to spare 10 minutes is not a lot. Give us those likes, give us those comments and let's get our base. We don't know where it'll be, but wherever it is, it will be somewhere that people can reach easily. We'll want good transport links, so near the M25, the A3, hopefully a station as well. I know I ask a lot, but if you don't, what do you get? <laughs> so yeah. if, you if your lovely young man could plaster up the I list there, that would, if not, I suggest you get a piece of paper and hold it up. <laughs> Exactly. No, I'll make sure that link is there. I think that's really important. And how exciting does that sound? Yes, um, it, it's we can 
get up to a million pounds possibly. Um, we've already raised 60,000 ourselves. Wow. We have a nationwide appeal going out this spring um, with wonderful patrons who have a variety of disabilities giving wonderful radio or television uh, appeals. So we hope we'll get there. But this Your Fund Surrey is a very important part of it. And it's going to be so easy for people to spend 10 minutes supporting us. It's really interesting, isn't it, that I think we often feel really powerless as individuals to, to affect change and to have a scheme where all you're asking is, is for people to go and say, yes, we, we believe in this and we want this to happen. As you say, it's it's 10 minutes of someone's time. And we know we know that our families, you know, have time is, is a really precious resource because when you've got children with disabilities, it just fritters away. Time disappears. However, it's it is that hope of something so exciting that could benefit not only our children but others to come. Um, it's certainly worth ten minutes of our time, isn't it? Yeah. Just to warn all the families that um, because they they don't want Mickey Mouse's or Donald Duck's tickets, they do ask for some details to prove that you are who you are. So that's why I said ten minutes. It takes a little few minutes just to put in your details. And then you could tick and like and comment away. <laughs> that sounds absolutely amazing, Annie. Thank you so much. Are you happy maybe for us to kind of wrap up for this time with the promise of more and exciting conversations? Yes, of course. And we could even have a new face. Perhaps ask our artistic director, Sarah, or our R&D, that's research and development director, Amy, to yes. talk away. And yes, that would be wonderful. That would be absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm absolutely sure that our members are going to love hearing from you as opposed to seeing my face every week. Um, and it's just so lovely to hear. I was I was saying to Annie just before we pressed record that there's something really exciting to me every time I meet somebody in the real world who has created a space in that real world where people with additional needs are not only um, welcomed but appreciated and wanted and valued rather than simply tolerated I suppose um, and, and that's just it's really heartwarming it's been an absolute pleasure to meet you thank you so so much thank you Benedict for the opportunity to chat to everyone